Hi, friends. Uh, it's Mr. Rogers here. And my job today is to make sure that you understand crossing over. And so crossing over is a process that occurs during prophase one of meiosis. And there's uh, not a lot of tricks to this. And one of the first things that I want us to understand is when you go through this, there's a lot of alarms that go off, at least in my head, like, well, if you do this, that it just seems like you could screw up so easily. And even though it seems like this gets screwed up a lot or would be, it honestly doesn't. And that's honestly a marvel of science. And I, we were still trying to figure out how a cell does this so well, because you're literally in crossing over, removing the arm of one chromosome in the DNA code and plugging into another side and doing it accurately and not screwing up the genes and everything like that. You would assume it would be a mess, but it really isn't because there are breakaway points and crossing over and spots and your cell doesn't just randomly choose where to snip the chromosome. There's some spots where it does it or it can do it. And when I say that, then it leads in your head thinking, okay, there's only a few ways that it can be cut, but I'm talking about thousands and thousands of spots where it can be cut. So um, each time you do crossing over, it's a unique experience and it leads to unique sex cells. So looking here at the actual slide. So like I said, it happens during prophase one and it happens when the chromosomes are still in their tetrad. So um, there's still the, the dad and the mom chromosome duplicates next to each other in bunches. And we call it tetrad because here's the dad chromosome, it's copy, it's mom chromosome, it's copy. And it's gonna be able to switch and crossing over its legs. Now, um, when they're also close together and when they're going through this process, we call it a synapsis, um, kind of like you're snapping things together. Um, and so that's technically the overall term for crossing over. Crossing over is like an older term that still is hovering around. Synapsis is probably a better term for it. And so we can switch out. And as you can see, it could be just the arm, it could be the arm and leg, it could be a little bit of the arm, a little bit of the leg, a little bit here, a little bit like, it could be in sections. It doesn't have to be one giant thing. It could be in the middle too. It doesn't have to be just the ends. It could be in here. It, it, it's a process that it's, we're still learning a lot about, but it, the point of bringing this up over and over and over again is this is one of the driving factors that creates unique sex cells. This is why out of all the hundreds of millions of sperms, every single one is different because crossing over. Because without crossing over, there's not that much variation of chromosomes. You're kind of stuck a little bit with what you got um, and how you kind of assemble them. But with this crossing over, it creates extreme uniqueness in every single one. Now, in crossing over, there's three steps. And they're, they're kind of simplified steps. They're not nothing crazy. And... The first one being, we're gonna need the chromosomes to touch each other. This allows the DNA to line up and to be accurate. So it doesn't like just happen afar. They need to be connected to each other. They're gonna be bumping into each other. So imagine like walking up to someone in the hallway, bumping your elbows together. That'd be the first step. Next is your elbow down to your fingers breaks off on your side, same on their side. That's the breakage of the DNA. That's done by an enzyme, an enzyme cuts it. And then a further enzyme then takes the two pieces and connects them back. So they're not ever really gonna float, by the way. Like they don't cut here and all of a sudden one just starts floating away somewhere else, that piece that gets cut. The two enzymes work together in tandem and um, picture almost like um, they're taped together. So one cuts, then the other one gets there and puts it on the other one. So there's not like, Oh no, we cut the arm and leg and it falls away. Because before break, we talked a lot about genetic disorders and what happens when you, you know, put chromosomes in the wrong places or too many. And this would be uh, a situation where you think to yourself like, huh, well, why, why wasn't there more mistakes here? Can be mistakes here? Well, it's because the system is very, very accurate, thankfully. Um, and there's not a lot of genetic disorders or genetic problems that come for crossing over. They come from something called non-disjunction. And uh, we'll talk about non-disjunction uh, tomorrow a little bit. And uh, 
but non-destruction is really just the screwing up of where the chromosome goes and meiosis has nothing to do with the actual crossing over. So the penguin's asking, what are some advantages of sexual reproduction? And the biggest advantage is the diversity it creates. Um, diversity allows evolution to push forward. Without diversity, you don't have options for evolution to occur. If we are all identical, there isn't gonna be a winner and loser because we're either all winter winners or we're all losers. There's not any um, dynamic changes, okay? Uh, with sexual reproduction, we have these changes, we have these uniqueness. Now in, in organisms, there are differences and now you can have winners and losers and it can drive the population towards a certain way. And you can kind of um, evolve with the surroundings and the environment. So sexual reproduction is huge. It's one of the biggest things in biology. Like I said, it, it drives evolution, it drives genetics. So, um, that's it. That's it for me in crossing over. I hope that was quick, that was easy. If you have any questions, let me know.